So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can add keyboard input to your web page or app using JavaScript. So you might be interested in this if you are creating a game and you want the user to have some control using the keyboard, or if you're designing an app and you want the user to be able to type input into a field without selecting it first. So to demonstrate this, I've created this keyboard input HTML document and in the body is just a text input and it has an ID of keyboard input. Uh, the script we were just in is linked to it and there's just some minimal styling here um, to make the input uh, first of all centered and also uh, with some margin from the top. So if I go to the browser, you can see what we're working with. Um, I can type in this input field, delete, just, just like in a normal input field. If I select the page and I start typing, it's not going to work. So in this tutorial, what we're aiming for is to get keyboard input into this text field here without actually selecting the text field. This could be useful if you have an app with several pages and on the first page you're asking for say height and then the next question weight and there's only one input and you don't want the user to have to select to be able to type. Also, if you're creating something like a calculator, this might be very useful. You don't want the user to actually click on the display of the calculator to type. You want just the keys to be doing all the work. So how do we go about this? Uh, so if I open up my script.js, what we need to do is listen out for an event on the document object. And there are several events that we can listen out for. So we're not listening out for an event on a specific element within the DOM, we're listening for it on the document itself. So as long as the page is selected, this event is going to fire. So the events we can listen for are, first of all, key down. And I'll show you what this does first. Um, you may already have guessed from the name that it's going to fire when a key is pressed down. Now, what we have here, every time this event fires is an event. Okay, and all I'm going to do in this example is log this event to the console. So every time I press a key down, this is firing, generates an event, I'm logging it to the console for now. So let's go over to the browser, I'm going to refresh, I'm going to press some letters, and I'm going to press some numbers. So, so as you can see here, each key I've pressed has generated an event object, and each of those event objects have properties on them that might be interesting to us. So the first key I pressed was A, so this generates an event object with the property key with the value A and code with the value key A. And it is these two properties which are interesting to us. So if you've read around on this topic a little bit already or you've implemented keyboard input in the past, you may have come across two other properties, which and key code, but these two have now been deprecated. So that means they may not have support in modern browsers or the support's no longer being updated. So the ones that are supported are key and code. So they're the ones we're interested in. Now, if I press some keys like shift or delete backspace or control, you can see that these are also being logged by the key down event. So key down is in a very literal way, logging what I'm pressing and creating an event object on that basis. Now, so this can be what we want in certain circumstances. So I could press up arrow, down, left, right. This would be, it would be very important to create events for, for these if this is a game. And just so you know, if I hold down a key, it keeps press, it keeps creating an event for that key. So that's how key down works. So I'll just keep a running list of these here. The next one we're going to look at is key press. This is very similar to key down. When we press a key down, it's going to create an event object, but it's slightly different. So first of all, I just press some letters. Looks very, very similar to key press. In fact, I think the output is exactly identical so far, but look what happens if I press shift 
or I press control or I press backspace. Okay, none of those event, none of those keys have created an event object. If I do the same for the arrow keys, I'm doing that right now, it's not generating any events. So you might be thinking, well, why would I want to use this? So take a look at what happens if I press shift and then A. Okay, so that's, cre that's just creating one event object and that's the key A and that tells you something very important about key press. It's generating an object that represents the intention behind what I'm trying to type, not what I'm typing literally. So if I was to go back into key down, which uh, provides a more literal uh, interpretation of what I'm typing and I press shift A, you can see it's logging shift as an event and also A as an event. So which one you should use in a certain situation really depends on what you're doing. If you want arrow keys, for example, obviously key down is going to be the uh, event listener of choice. If you're looking for more of an intentional output of what the user is trying to type, then you can go for key press. Okay, so finally, there's key up. Okay, so I'm sure you can guess what that's going to do. Now, it's more like key down than key press. So, so it's creating objects that represent what we're pressing literally, not, not our intention. So for example, if I press the up arrow now and I let go of it, you'll see that these are working. Shift, down, and then up and that creates a new object. So, so every time I release a key, it's creating an event object just in the same way that key down does. Okay, so that covers the event listeners that we might be interested in. Now what we want to do is to actually uh, do something to our page because at the moment we're just generating, um, we're just logging this event to the console. What I want to do is write the output of, let's use the key, to this input field here without me having to focus on it. So the first thing that I need to do is select that element. Uh, so I'll get it by its ID. And that's keyboard input. And I'm going to give that a variable name, let's say keyboard input with camel case. Now down here, what I want to do is set key. every time this event fires, change that to key down. Every time this event fires, I want the value of keyboard input dot value to be, uh, actually I want to sort of add on to whatever's already there, uh, the, the value of event dot key. Okay, so if I save that now, hopefully that's already working. So I'm focusing on the page and you can see the output is being written. But there's a problem here and that is if I, and but there's a problem here, but there's a problem here that you do sometimes run into when you're trying to add keyboard events like this and that is you can see that whatever I'm typing is being printed twice. So how do you prevent that? Well, you can actually do that with just HTML to make things nice and nice and easy. Just add a read only attribute to this element. And you'll see now if I select it, okay, it's not printing twice. So we're just relying on the event that I'm creating here to print something to the keyboard input element. Not now seeing it twice because the default uh, behavior of this input field has been changed and now it's just all JavaScript. Now you'll see here if I press something like backspace, this prints literally print, prints backspace to uh, this field. If I press shift, this press shift and, and so on. So this is usually not the kind of behavior that we want, but we can fix that and we can fix that uh, by going back to our script and programming for the individual keys we want what they are going to do. So this is a much safer way of incorporating keyboard input than we're doing now because we may have forgotten about a key 
like arrow or something like that and then it's coming up with this kind of input that we're not very happy with so the way that we can fix that is to add some if statements okay so we want to check what key has been typed so so to begin with, I'm going to just control the input for uh, the letter A. So I'll say event.key, if event.key equals A, then what I want to do is keyboard input dot value, okay, is event.key. So I'm just going to paste that in there and I could do that for all of the other keys that I want. So we'll say B, we'll say C as well. Okay, so now if I go to my browser and I refresh, now I'm pressing backspace, I'm pressing space. I've programmed all the keys and what they're going to do now. So it's very predictable. A, B, C, no other key is doing anything. That, and this is what I mean by this being a safer way of incorporating keyboard input. Now, what if we want backspace? So I'm pressing it at the moment, nothing is happening, but we probably want our user to be able to delete characters from what they've entered. So the way that we can incorporate that is through programming it with JavaScript. So do it in exactly the same way that we've done for the others. And uh, just a tip here, if you've forgotten any of the keys, you can just log the event to the console and then see what each key is producing. So in this case, I want to get the backspace. So the key is backspace. And then what I want to do is I want to say keyboard input dot value. I actually want to say equals here, keyboard dot value dot slice. And the way that slice works is it slices a string from the first argument until the last argument. It also accepts negative indexing. So if I say minus one, this is one away from the end. This will cut the string uh, by one character replicating backspace behavior. I do have a blog post explaining this, so I will post that in the description below this video. Okay, so now I'm going to go A, B, C, and I'm gonna use backspace. And as you can see, backspace is working again. And that's the way we would do it for all of the other keys. So if I wanted to program the use of the arrow, arrow keys for use in a game, I would just say if arrow up, if arrow right, and then I would uh, explicitly program what I want each of these keys to do. Now, of course, you might be thinking in this example, we could have used key press, and I wouldn't have had to program backspace, that's true, but then we wouldn't have been, but then you won't be able to use the arrow key. So there's upsides and downsides with both key down and key press, and which one you want to use really depends upon your project and what you want to achieve. So I hope you found this video useful and that you're now feeling confident about being able to add keyboard input to your web page or app.